switching out the EFI chip so we can have access to the computer again. First off, we're going to remove the bottom cover to get access to the inside of the computer. Next, we're going to remove the battery. On this kind of operation, you want to basically remove it with a plastic pry tool or a spudger, which I have right here. We're going to do that now. There you are. Also, we are working on an anti-static mat. Uh, you want to make sure that you're on a static-free surface. These computers are very sensitive to any kind of static discharge. Um, also, now we're going to go ahead and remove all the screws that hold the motherboard down. All right, we have the board removed, and the EF chip, uh, EFI chip is right here. You want to be very careful when you work with this part of the board. There are a lot of delicate components. Um, what I'm going to do is actually mask off a lot of these components with heat-resistant tape, um, and after that, we'll move forward. We're going to mask off the, the board with heat resistant tape to make sure we don't damage any other components outside of the working area. Usually this video I do on top of... Hey guys, I'm back. Uh, I had a couple of technical difficulties. Um, hey guys, we're back. Our camera had a little bit of difficulty, so uh, I'm going to continue on from where I thought I stopped. So I've covered up the board and made sure all the crucial components are covered. We're only going to keep open a small little square, as, as you can see here, um, that lets us just focus on the part that we're going to be working with. Next thing is that we're going to heat up the board. We're going to make sure we heat up most of the board to around 200 degrees and then also focus all the heat right on the chip when we're ready to pull it off and the chip should come out with no problem. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here and get my heating gun ready and I'll be right back. Alright guys, I'm back. So I got my heating gun ready to go. We are using a rework station to do this. This chip, you want to make sure that when you put the new one on, there is a small dot that is marking position number one. Uh, you want to make sure you put the same the, the new chip on in the exact same position. Um, also, you want to make sure that when you heat this board, you heat everything evenly. You're not putting heat in a certain area. The biggest problem with this board, it is a cold board, so the heat does disperse evenly. And when you're trying to do work like this, it sometimes gets absorbed pretty quickly. So when you are heating it, make sure you heat the whole board and then basically do a circular motion and then hit the center of the chip when you're ready to pull it and the chip should come off with no problem. So here we go. Also you want to be using a, a, a medium speed on your heat, heating gun. Uh, using a really high speed can sometimes blow other components away. You want to make sure you're very careful in this procedure. So I'll heat the whole working area with a nice even motion. This is a smaller board, you know, so it shouldn't take too long to heat. Right now my settings are at 260 degrees. The temperature which solder melts is at 240 degrees. So I'm a little bit above my temperature, but this is just to get it there pretty quick. And again, just for video purpose only. And I usually what I do is, after getting everything evenly heated, I'll nudge the chip a little bit to see if I'm there yet. Still not there.
Now there are a lot of components around the chip, so be very careful when you're doing this, you don't knock any of these other components off the board. nudge it just a little bit do not force the chip off
Mit der Praxis. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and lay down some flux. The reason I was bumping the chip is usually when you hit it just a little bit, it'll knock it into the right position. When you have the flux underneath the chip, your chip will automatically just spring into the right position. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here. We're going to resume in a little bit. I'm going to wait for the board to cool down. Uh, after it's cooled down, I am going to clean off the area with a little bit of uh, alcohol, and uh, we'll be doing assembly again. Alright guys, I let the board cool down. I'm going to go ahead and clean off the chip with alcohol. Just very lightly clean off all the flux. The reason we're doing this really doesn't matter if you leave the flux on the board, but is after I'm done cleaning it, I am going to quickly inspect the edges of the chip to make sure they've made full contact. If it doesn't make full contact, you can run a solder iron right next to the chip with a little bit of solder and uh, they'll fulfill the connection there and you should be good to go. Um, in this scenario, I didn't have to do that. It looks like all of the connections are there. Alright guys, I went ahead and plugged it in. Our computer was uh, dead when we were done with the repair, but go ahead and power it on. Before we used to get a black screen with four squares uh, asking for a iCloud password. And let's see what happens now. Alright, we are booting and we are ready to go guys. Thank you for watching. If you guys need help doing any of this kind of stuff, feel free to contact us. Uh, we do offer mail-in repair service, and you can also email us for any information. Our website is mygadgetworks at gmail.com. It is M-Y-G-A-D-G-E-T-W-O-R-K-S at gmail.com.